Hello again YouTube, welcome back to my channel. This is Michelle with My Mini Ramblings and today I'm going to be doing a more homeschool focused video and it's about math. So I'm going to be showing you the curriculum, curriculum that I chose this last year for my son for math and I've really been enjoying it. I did a lot of research and watched a lot of different videos to find what would work best for him. He absolutely hates math and I know a lot of kids hate it but he's also autistic and um, he's very high functioning but he's it was more um like before they put everything on the same thing on the same spectrum um he was considered having asperger's so i had to find something that would keep his focus and that he would not freak out when he has to do this math and i decided to go with horizons math so I started by getting, so he was in the fifth grade this last year, but he was so far behind in math that I had to back it down. And he is slowly catching up, but we definitely have a lot of work to do. So I had started by getting the fourth grade pack, which I am going to save to use, of course. And if the light weren't so bright, you would actually be able to see this. There. So this was the fourth grade set of math and it was too difficult for him. So I knew that like third grade math would be easy, but we needed to back it down and do the review for like the first half of that math. And it's been helping him a lot. So that's what I ended up doing was ordering a second kit in Horizons Math for the third grade or the third level. So everything that comes in this nice little box and inside you receive three different books. So the big book you get is the Horizons Math Teacher Guide. And it's pretty thick and it goes for the whole year. I've got myself some little notes up here to mark different places like the lesson that we're on and that sort of thing. Then it comes with two of the workbooks for the kids. So here are the two of those. Now, when I say this last year, I mean that we only just started this recently. We took a short break while I planned out some um, math curriculum. So he will still be in the fifth grade probably through the fall and into winter because of that as we catch up. And that's one of the awesome things about homeschooling is that you can have your kid at what level they're actually at. Like there's other things that he's way ahead in. Like reading, he is way ahead of fifth grade. So anyway i'm gonna go ahead and go over this with you and show you how it works so the first thing that i took a look at was the teacher's guide and inside the teacher's guide there's of course the first few pages that will explain to you how to do things and how to use the book and that sort of thing um and then there is a so that first section i showed you was before you start then there's an, a readiness evaluation that you give the child to find out. And this was part of how I found out he was not ready for fourth. Um, the fourth grade evaluation was just, he got very few things on it correct. And then when I did this third grade evaluation, he did much better. So I knew that's where we needed to start. So it's just a black and white page and it's two-sided. Actually, there's two pages total, both two-sided. And you just can either rip these out if you want to do this or if you want to keep the book to be able to sell later like I do, then you can just make copies on a copy machine and give them those copies to do. Um, and then after that, so, so I did the evaluation with him and determined that third grade was where we needed to start for math for him. So next is preparing the lesson and it tells you how to prepare each lesson and it's very um, well organized and it's very well written so it's easy to figure out and uh, some of it's self-explanatory for those of you that maybe have done this before or been doing it for a while but if you haven't and you're new to homeschooling or you're new to this type of math then it's super handy. After that we have the scope and sequence. So the scope and sequence goes through each chapter or each section and it talks about um like it, it actually talks about all the different topics so like the first topic that's covered is number theory which is recognition read and write and that includes things like counting by ones through tens even and odd numbers word numbers zero through nine hundred and ninety nine million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine and roman numerals most of this except roman numbers uh my son already 
knew how to do. So it's just basic review for him, but that's okay because I wanted to build that base back up so that I know where he's at and that he's learning everything properly. Um, so number theory, then it goes on to place value, and then number order, addition, time, subtraction, money, multiplication, geometry, fractions, decimals, division, measurement, graphs, area, perimeter, and volume, and ratio. And under each of those sections, it gives you more details on what is covered. Next, it talks about the manip manipulatives that you'll need. And manipulatives are like extra things like uh, play money or um, flashcards, those sorts of things. And it tells you what you need for each lesson and where to find them. And then after the manipulatives, we have where to use mathematics worksheets. So the worksheets come in the back of this book and this tells you where each one of them fits in. The worksheets are not required. They're a great extra step if your students like breezing th through things really fast and they need a bit of a more challenge or if they're struggling like my son does and they need the extra practice. They're excellent for that. Next is the section called Appearance of Concepts Mathematics 3. So this tells you where each of the different concepts are and where they're located in the lessons. And then after that, it gives you a development of concepts and it shows you how they build. So it's kind of awesome. And one of the reasons I chose this math for my son was the way they build on it. It says here that all concepts are covered in a flexible yet methodical way in this curriculum. The following illustration explains the usual pattern of concept progression through the lesson sequence. If any given lesson, in any given lesson, you will likely find concepts at various stages of their unfolding for the student. Um, so we'll kind of skip through part of this. And basically what it does is it will, there's an introduction phase for a concept. So let's say we're talking about place value. For two to five days, you'll have an introduction to that place value. Then you'll have the primary practice after that for four to five days. Then as new items are being introduced later on, they'll come back and they'll give you secondary practice on the topics you've already covered. Usually that's two to three days every two weeks. And then after that, you have a break and then it comes back again for a primary review for four to five days on that topic and then a secondary review two to three days every two weeks. And then that pattern usually continues for all 160 lessons. Now, after that, we move on to the lessons themselves. And everything is laid out super nicely and very organized, not necessarily pretty to look at, but just super helpful right here in the teacher's guide. So the first thing it'll do is talk about the concepts for that lesson. That's just a basic general overview of the topics that will be covered. Then it goes into the objectives, which is what your child should be able to do and what they should learn by the end of the lesson. After that are some teaching tips, which are super helpful. These will give you some general ideas on how to make the lessons easier to understand or how to make them more interactive or how to bring the information across in different ways. So that's really nice. And then at the bottom of the first page of the lesson is the materials, supplies, and equipment list. And the materials and supplies are usually simple things. I've had to buy the um, flashcards because I didn't have any, um, but it's usually it's stuff that's super cheap. Play money, sometimes you'll need. So that is what is on the first page of the lesson. And each lesson in the teacher's guide is across two pages. So on the second page, then we get into the lesson itself. And it's really nice because it just walks you right through it and what to do in each step. So the activities here, it shows you the first activity, what you should do. So in this case, for this very first lesson, it's have the student or students count out loud by ones to 100 using a number chart if necessary. Usually something, piece of cake, just some sort of review or to see where they're at before you begin the activities in the worksheet, workbook. Then the second one, it gets you into the activities. A lot of times they will first of all have you um, show them something on the chalkboard or have them practice writing things down. And then after that, you will go right into the student workbook. Now, this student workbook is one of the main reasons, other than how nicely and easy it is to follow and how nice the lessons are laid out. This workbook is one of the biggest reasons that I chose to go with this curriculum simply because look how bright and colorful and fun it is. Like seriously, I know you can't really make math fun. Some people who love math would disagree with me on that. But 
these work sheets in the child's workbook are so colorful and bright and interactive and it just makes it so much nicer for working. Now for my son who is distracted easily this actually helps him focus better because it's something that's fun to look at and it's something that's interesting. And I'm just showing you a few different pages here. Each lesson begins on the right hand side of the two page spread so it actually is a front and back of a page. So it starts here and they will go through each section of the lesson and then you will flip it and the other side has the finish of the lesson. And then over here we start the next lesson. So each lesson for him typically lasts about a full hour. If you have children that focused easier and that can breeze through their homework better, it can go much faster than that. Like you could have this done in 20 to 30 minutes, I'm sure. But for my son who has lots of difficulty with math and has a horrible time focusing on math, it takes him at least an hour, sometimes longer. Hour and a half, two hours is not unusual for him. So then after you complete the first activity on that student lesson, then you'll go to the next one and it'll tell you, you know, what to review and what to talk about and what to teach them. And then it will say, okay, now go to student activity two in the workbook. So I will show you the very first page, which was the first activity that went with this. And you will see here, he's got terrible handwriting. I'm lucky to be able to read it sometimes, but anyway, that, that um, activity correlates with each section and you go through each of the activities on this second page of the lesson guide. Then at the very bottom, if you need extra review, there are worksheets and it tells you where to find the worksheet and which one they would do for that lesson. So the worksheets are in the back of the teacher's guide and they are, first of all, before that are all the answers for all the lessons. So we have those first so that you can check their work. And then after that are the worksheets. So here we have an example of one of the worksheets. And it's just lots of extra practice, which I give to him to do because he needs to drill this stuff into his head. And some of them are just simple like that. Other ones are a little bit more fun with the money but they're all black and white and you can copy them right on a copier so that you don't have to use the pages right in the teacher's guide if you don't want to. And then of course, after the worksheets are all of the worksheet answer guides split up into four worksheets per page to condense space. So I have to say that this math curriculum has been excellent for us. It is really helping him to learn it, he's finally like things are clicking and he's understanding it. He's memorizing things better. It is working excellent for us. There may be other math out there that other people prefer, but for us, Horizons math is really, really good. And if you want something that is very well spelled out, that tells you exactly what you need to do, and that is a little more interactive and colorful for your child to be interested in, I highly suggest Horizons math. Now, I'm not sure but I believe there may be a way to take the test online before you purchase the curriculum. I'm honestly not sure on that though. If anybody knows, let me know down below. But if there is, that would save you from buying the wrong curriculum like I did and then happen to buy another one. I'm gonna end up using it so it's not that big of a deal. I just could have saved 80 bucks on one kit for the time being. But that's okay because um, we're just breezing through this. So far he's doing really, really well and we are very much enjoying this curriculum. So if you use Horizons Math, let me know what you think about it. Be sure to put in the comments below what you think about that or if you found one that works better for you. Just give me your thoughts. Tell me what you use for math in your homeschooling. And if you would like to see more videos like this, be sure to give this a thumbs up also if you enjoyed it. And also subscribe so that you will see whenever I post other homeschooling videos as well. If you hit the little bell afterwards, it will tell you and send you a notification every time I post a new video. But I thank you very much for watching and I appreciate your time. Hope you have a great day and I will talk to you next time. Bye for now.